let's take a look at photosynthesis, which is the process by which green plants, called autotrophs, because they can make their own food, um, they make sugar. The equation is going to be carbon dioxide plus water, which are called the reactants because it's what goes into the reaction, with the addition of light is going to form sugar and oxygen, which are the products, what comes out of the reaction. Let's take a look at the chloroplast where all this happens. Remember that we have a double membrane on this organelle. We have the outer membrane and the inner membrane. And then inside we have the stroma, which is that liquid interior. The thylakoids are the disc-shaped membranes, so each one of these little discs is called a thylakoid. Inside of those, we have the green pigment that captures the sunlight energy, which is chlorophyll. And then a stack of these thylakoids is called a grain -up. If we look at the different stages of photosynthesis, this whole big green thing is the chloroplast. We have the granum here. This is where the light dependent reaction takes place because it uses sunlight. And then the in the stroma, we have the Calvin cycle, which does not require light. So sometimes it's called the dark reaction or the light independent reactions. If we look a little closer, now we can see our input of sunlight energy into the thylakoids and also water goes into that and from this reaction we get oxygen in the calvin cycle we input carbon dioxide and our end result is sugar but we have a couple other compounds that are exchanged between these two reactions so we have nadp plus and adp um, plus p which is a phosphate those come from the calvin cycle and then from the light dependent reaction, we get ATP and NADPH, which are actually the compounds that are carrying the energy. They're kind of taxiing them over from the light dependent reaction and going to the Calvin cycle where the energy is going to be used. And then those compounds return to pick up more energy. So let's look at that a little closer. Let's talk first about what ATP really is. It's adenosine triphosphate, meaning three phosphates. It's a usable energy for the cell, so the cell uses it to do work such as active transport. The molecule is made up of adenine and ribose. Ribose, remember, is a five-carbon sugar, and together those make adenosine. Then we have this chain over here, and these are the phosphates. Remember, three of them for triphosphate. And they are negatively charged and repel one another, so they're unstable. So think of magnets when you put the same pole towards each other. They're pushing each other away. Well, the phosphates are doing the same thing, and they're very unstable. And these bonds, because of that, they're creating a lot of energy. So when one of these phosphates is released, it's going to release energy with it. If we think about it in terms of a battery, ATP would be a fully charged battery. So then if we look at ADP, is adenosine diphosphate, very similar looking, except we only have two phosphate molecules. We lost one of them. And when that happens, that energy was being used. This molecule now is only a partially charged battery, so it needs to pick up another phosphate in order to be fully charged. So ATP and ADP um, are used constantly, and they're basically recycled. So when ATP loses a phosphate, energy is going to be released. So ATP, remember, is our fully charged battery. Okay, so here we have our phosphates fully charged, and it's going to be used, and that phosphate's going to fall off. Now it's partially charged. So then the ADP is going to return to a reaction, and then uh, energy is going to be stored again to make that battery fully charged.